start. Four, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour, expanding the International Space Station while creating a classroom in space. But who were these supernatural beings? Many of these Hindu gods did look different than humans. Generally, they're often depicted as having blue skin. And that may well be describing extraterrestrials. Could Hitler have been aware of these same ancient accounts? Might that have been the reason behind Nazi Germany's archaeological and scientific trips to India and Africa? The Nazis were looking for something. They were looking for some kind of technology that the ancients possessed, that we had lost, and they wanted to find it, and they wanted to find it fast. Throughout the Middle East and also in ancient India, there's stories of jinn, these genies, they've got magic powers, magic lamps, flying carpets and things like that. So in my mind, it's quite possible that this ancient jinn are really the ancient aliens with all their technology and aircraft. technological advancement in the history of mankind was placing a man on the moon. On July 20th, 1969, less than 25 years after the end of World War II, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stood on the surface of an actual alien world. But how did such a technological leap forward happen so quickly? And could it possibly have been tied to ancient technologies discovered by Germany? If you think about all the technology we have today, there isn't anything that either wasn't invented during this period of time or greatly enhanced by the Germans during the Reich years. The Germans pretty much invented our modern world. Following the end of World War II, Many of Germany's top scientists, engineers, and technicians 
were captured and brought to America as part of a secret project known as Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip was a US government project to bring German scientists to the United States to work either for the military or for industry. They were taken into custody, they were granted asylum, they were brought to the United States. Their horrific war crimes with concentration camp victims were expunged. The most important and influential of these former German scientists was Dr. Werner von Braun, the commander of Germany's Penamunda Space Research Center. Von Braun was really the developer of the V-1 and the V-2 rocket. He was a member of the Nazi party. His commanders were SS generals. He was privy to some of the most secret projects that Nazi Germany was developing during the war. Once in America, von Braun quickly established himself as the leader of the US military's burgeoning rocket program. He would eventually become one of the key architects of NASA. In fact, the first rockets that the United States was launching out in New Mexico were essentially the V-2 rockets. In fact, I think the only real difference was that we'd taken the swastikas and the Iron Crosses off. The whole space race almost seems like a joke as I look back on it because the, the fact is there wasn't an American rocket program versus a Russian rocket program. We had a German rocket program. We didn't have an American rocket program. There's no question as you look at NASA, there's no getting to the moon without von Braun and the other German rocket scientists. In many ways, the American government has just carried on what the Third Reich was doing building underground bases and factories, developing secret technology. And this technology was also in ancient times too. And it's the same technology that was used in the Vimanas. In 1970, UFO researcher Alan Greenfield claims to have met rocket expert Werner von Braun while examining declassified files at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And I said to him, how did you develop that much technology so fast? And he looked down the rows of UFO files and he said, we had help from them. And I said, you mean them, meaning the aliens? He said, yeah, we had help. We all got help from them. And that was like the eye-opening moment. SS Commander Heinrich Himmler brought in psychics and mediums who claimed they could contact extraterrestrial beings. One of these was an influential member of the Vril Society named Maria Orsic. Maria Orsic headed a group of women known as the Virilikin or the female Vril members, and they were beautiful women. They grew their hair very long because they felt like their long hair could act as an antenna to the universal Vril energy. They believed that extraterrestrials, non-human force, was right here on planet Earth, and they were the ones who inspired the early technology to develop circular-shaped craft based on images that they'd seen of flying saucers. They inspired Schaumburger. They inspired other developers to look into the possibility that these disc-shaped craft could fly through some sort of anti-gravity, some sort of levitation. The Germans were able to develop a technology so far in advance of the Allied technology that people said they were helped by extraterrestrials. In fact, the one quote we have was from Hermann Oberth. And Dr. Oberth was in the German rocketry program. Hermann Oberth said, quote, we were helped by people from other worlds. 